Hey, friend. Hey, friend. So what are we talking about today? Uh, there has been a lot going on down at the institution. Uh, not the institution that we talk about. The castle. <laughs> The real institution, a.k.a. the monarchy, uh, across the pond with one known as Kate Middleton. <laughs> Kate. Yeah. Um. And let me just go going into this. I am going to be the one on this topic that is completely ignorant. I know nothing about the monarchy or the royal family. I, I am a crown um, dropout. I only saw part of the first season. And the only thing I really know is about Harry because, you know, he's fine. I always thought he was really handsome. And of course, Meghan Markle. So I will be looking to you to like prelude. Us I don't know if I'm the expert, but I think that we have something to say about what is happening with the media and how we share and when we share and what we share. Yeah. Um, so just to give people the facts that we're working with, because- that's important. And please, in the chat, let us know if there are facts that we're missing. Allegedly, Princess Kate had abdominal surgery in January. That was planned. Okay. That's what that's what her press secretary said, and that she would be out of commission through Easter. And then there, then she really was gone. No one saw her, right, for the last few months. And then a bunch of conspiracy theories started emerging about her whereabouts. Okay. And then, allegedly, she and William posted a photo for the UK Mother's Day last week. Gotcha. That then was killed because it turned out to have been manipulated. And let me just say from what I read about this, it wasn't just killed as in like they deleted the photo, which is kind of bad enough in this social media right world. But no, the Associated Press ordered for it to be scrubbed from the internet because it did not meet their photo standards. So we're not talking about a Kardashian kind of Photoshop. We're talking about a doctored photo. So go ahead. That Those are the facts. And so for you... The conspiracy theories are quite interesting. And what are those? That she died, oh, that God. she had that she had a BBL. Shut that, up. <laughs> that she had a facelift. Not a BBL. Uh, what are the conspiracy theories you heard. Um none when I tell you this has not come down my timeline that's crazy which, to me which I right right it's interesting how we live in completely different social media worlds I have the only place I've seen this is the mainstream news because I, I read the the times in the morning um but uh, I thought to myself when I first heard about it and you and I've gone through a lot of surgeries that this must be a pretty serious abdominal surgery if it's going to take three months to heal so from the beginning, it sounded a little like, okay, there's something going on that we're not being told. So that I came to the same conclusion because the average healing time for very serious surgeries is four to six weeks. Girl, come on, come on, uh, uh, right? Dr. Lindauer. Right, so like even the idea of being out of commission for more than two months to me reads maybe surgery, but something else. What do you think that something else is? I wonder if she had an abdominal surgery due to maybe an eating disorder and then went into treatment. Mm. And eating disorders are notoriously hard to treat. So maybe they were giving her, I mean, you don't, like if you have a lifelong eating disorder, it's the, the, the data is very poor in terms of recovery, though obviously recovery is always possible. Um, so I'm wondering if they gave her a long landing I, I don't know, like, if that's the right term, like landing pad to like, to heal, um, or to get treatment. Yeah. Um, it also potentially reads to me some, some mental health stuff. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. What about you? So I am in preparation for this chat today, went back and watched clips of um, Megan and Harry's interview with Oprah. You remember that when they left? And it reminded me of when uh, Megan talked about honestly wanting to unalive herself, having ideations. And uh, 
she uh, went to both HR and to other members who mm-hmm. were leaders in the institution, folks who do not remember. I will recount it really quickly. She said, I am struggling. I am not well. I am under an onslaught of racist vitriol daily. And they said, sorry, we can't do nothing for you. She's like, I just need to go somewhere because I am unwell and I am afraid to be alone. At this point, she'd been isolated. They had told her that she couldn't even leave. And she had just had a baby. And she had just had a baby. So probably some postpartum things happening as well. They refused to get her the help that she was desperately begging for. And at some point after we know that um, they ultimately left, she and her husband, Prince Harry. And so uh, I'm sure people hear comparisons of these two women all the time, but I don't think it's possible to have this conversation without comparing their treatment. Because it seems to me that there is a way that the institution is protecting Kate that Megan did not have the privilege of. I'm just saying to the point that from what I read today, there is a picture, one picture, I think, of Kate and her mom driving. It's kind driving. of like, you know, that's only been released in the U.S. Be- Why? Because in the U.K., the media, they are respecting the royal family's wishes of allowing her time to heal. To my point, I wish her well. I hope that whatever's happening, she is okay. But let's talk about how much we should even be privy to what's happening in people's lives. Sure, we let's have that conversation. But let's also have the conversation about people who live a very public life and then make the choice to go dark mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it makes it worse. Girl. So I'm not saying that we have a right to know what her medical history is, but in their effort to maintain their privacy, they've just made it worse. Girl. And also about that. Well, she's someone who they say kind of has revolutionized the institution because prior to her, there was not this big social media presence. It was her and um what's what's her husband's name? What's her baby daddy name? Prince William. Prince William who were the first ones to kind of have a social media presence. And a lot of that was because of her. Um, And so, yes, she has been known as a sharer in a way that other members of the royal family have not been. So to your point, people have come to expect that. And I struggle with that too, Margot, because um, I saw a clip recently of a podcast episode that we posted where I talked about sharing and that being part of my healing. I've never really thought twice about it until recently. And it specifically is around mental health. My breast cancer diagnosis and journey, I didn't think about it very, very present. But being more open about having anxiety, I think causes people to make certain extrapolations about my health and my mental health in particular that I am just not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out how much of that story to share, especially when you're already in a fragile position. Mm-hmm. So I can empathize. I can empathize too. I I think I can empathize. And I also, I mean, look, I'm not a PR professional or a media professional. I just feel like there was a way to do this where they shared maybe a little more yeah. so that the the noise lessened. That's all I'm saying. Like, She's in treat. I mean, it's also weird because there's, there's, you contrast that obviously to Megan, but then also to Charles, who just recently revealed that he has prostate cancer and is in treatment. And so again, not that they're all a monolith and, and everyone has the ability to make their own decisions about what they share, but I don't see people like really interested in Charles's treatment. Like he has prostate cancer. He's getting treated. There are like various treatments for prostate cancer, surgery and chemo and radiation and other forms of maintenance medication. And people are just like, okay, he has prostate cancer. That's sad. We wish him well. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two things here for me. Number one, the fact that whatever is going on to your point, it must be something that people are not comfortable truly sharing. Because I think cancer in my case, 
Cancer is one thing. People can hold you. They um, have a bit more understanding of that diagnosis. If she is dealing with an eating disorder, if she's dealing with a mental health diagnosis, those are things that the general public, it's sad to say, are not going to have as much compassion and understanding. Or what if, for example, she has an ostomy bag? Exactly. Right? And maybe it's the surgery, the ostomy bag, and then sometimes you can have surgery to remove the ostomy bag. Which is a long process. Right. I yeah. don't know. I mean, again, this is exactly what they didn't want to have happen with people guessing. Well, and then I think, and the second thing is, to your point, why did they even release the damn photo? They had told her about she was coming back in, after Easter. What was the point of releasing the doctored photo? And then why didn't anyone just say, don't doctor a photo? And it was done so poorly. I'm like, this is the best y'all could Right? That's the part that just doesn't make sense is what I mean. I'm not a media professional, but I would know. And so that makes a reasonable person think that her appearance has changed so drastically mm. that they can't release a photo That's what of they said. They were like, with her kids. They were like, well, just give us the unedited photo. And then they really, they, they refused. You oh, know? I didn't do that. That's interesting. Yeah, they they refused. People were asking for the unedited photo and they refused. And even um the statement was a obviously a written statement and you know, not like face to camera, not a video. I don't know what is happening. I think the whole thing is just strange. And Americans really don't have a, a way of understanding it. Like the way people are so wrapped up in a non-ruling monarchy, a group and an institution of imperial colonizers is so strange to me. And obsessed. Oh yeah, it is a pure obsession. No shade, no tea. I'm sure we have many people who are from across the pond, also in Caribbean countries and maybe other colonized territories, formerly colonized territories that get it. If you do, please let these two Americans know because yeah. I can't, I, I can't, I cannot relate. It, it's, it's more than a celebrity, it feels like. Yeah. I also just want to bring back and focus or like end this conversation on something you said because this has not been inserted into the chat in any real way is how her treatment has been differentiated from that which Meghan Markle received, A. And then B, what of Meghan Markle and Harry speaking out about how unkind Princess Kate and William were to them? Mm -hmm. And what, if anything, is is the connection there with what's going on now? Mm. you mean as far as the blowback towards yeah kate? like i wonder what the blowback against kate has been yeah i also wonder if they have any relationship whatsoever you know harry has gone on record to say that he empathizes with both his brother and his father because he had the privilege of being able to leave but there was something that Megan said to me that will really stick with me. And I think it probably is an example of the difference between misogyny and misogyny noir. She said that when she went and asked for help around all of the blowback that she was receiving and just the disgusting and humiliating, taunting, them finding her father, her half-sister writing a book, all of these things, and the institution not being willing to kill it, they said to her, everybody deals with these things. This is just what it means to be a royal, like join the club. And Megan said, rude and racist are not the same thing. So people calling Megan, you know, waiting Megan, waiting to get married, it's not the same thing as calling me a monkey. And that has to be recognized and they refuse to do it. So again, my heart goes out to Kate, but we know a real life example of when it was much, much worse. Yeah. There's also this other element, right? In differentiating Kate and Megan, where Kate 
grew up in the UK in this kind of elite class, kind of being groomed, maybe not being groomed to be a princess, but like knew the expectations placed on her. Megan was a smart American girl who became an actress, but was also had her own blog, was very public. And from the beginning, the royals didn't like her pedigree. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the fact that she was black. Absolutely. But yeah. like the whole public facing nature of Megan. That's career. a really good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. And so there's also something, you know, like maybe Megan really does heal in community, right? Like felt like she wanted to share and Kate doesn't because those are like socialized behaviors. So we can't criticize Kate for like wanting privacy, but Absolutely not. But whatever's happening is very serious and pretending like it's not is just adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. And I mean, we talked about this in a recent episode, the episode on quitting most recently about um, Risa Tisa, Teresa, mm. and the fact that the idea of healing in community is not just for that person, but it is for others. And so we all can take something from someone's struggle, honestly. Right. And so whatever she's going through is very serious. You don't just disappear for four months. Not from your job, which is what being a royal is. Yeah. Right. Not from your job. And we don't know if she's disappeared from her personal life. We have no idea. I mean, she could have been in treatment this whole time. That's true. We don't know. And whatever it is, it's serious. So them pretending like it's not serious. I mean, them giving just enough for us to know it's very serious, but pretending like it's not serious and then trying to do something to make it seem not serious that makes it seem even more serious makes it seem like she's dying. <laughs> exactly. And we don't want that for her. We want to support her. <laughs> and if it is some sort of let me just put it differently. It is some sort of health related thing that's impacting her during her forties. I think there are a lot of people who would want to support her. Yes. Totally agree with you that there are a lot of people that can stand. We call it in the, in the church stand in intercession or like intercessor intercessory prayer. So this idea that we can hold the space for you while you heal. So wishing her the absolute best and everybody, man, it's just a lot going on, Em, right? To, to the point of being in your 40s, it, it's hard out here. I don't know that I would recommend it. Like, don't age. I'm just no, kidding. don't say that. I'm just kidding. It, it actually is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing. Uh, but there's it's actually, wait, can I just share something? Right. Like, to our point about aging is both beautiful and horrifying. I had a doctor's appointment last night or yesterday with my menopause doctor, you know, cause I'm in menopause and I'm on hormone replacement therapy that is working better than the prior one, but still, I don't know. I'm not feeling, I mean, I, I'm never going to feel like I used to, but I'm still so tired. I'm really, really fatigued even. And I'm, I track my sleep. I'm in big age. I am sleeping enough. I don't drink anymore. I eat well. I exercise. I have good sleep hygiene. I'm doing the things. Okay. okay. Thanks. And I'm exhausted. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, well, maybe this is like a hormone, hormonal thing. And so she was like, well, here's the deal. We can up your dose because the type we can up your dose. There's one larger dose. It's double the dose of what you're taking. I was like, oh, okay. And, she, and I was like, well, what are the side effects? And she's like, well, blood clots, Ooh. hair loss. Oh, God. Acne. I don't think that that's an option. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, friend. That sounds like getting rid of, rid of one problem and having another. I was like, oh. And I was like, well, what would you recommend? And she was like, uh, you know, just take it for a few months, see how you feel. Man, get out of here. <laughs> what? what? No, thank you. No, thank you. Obviously, I'm going to do it, but <laughs> I'm saying like there's just no data for women, people. None. So, Princess Kate, share your story to the extent you feel comfortable because you're going to help all of us. You're going to help all of us. And also, speaking of health issues at a, at a big age, my grand. 
parents have called me every day for the past two weeks to discuss bowel movements. So they're really concerned about my bowels and they were describing them in detail, the frequency, the tone, the tenor, a lot of stuff that's going on. Um, so the wisdom I would recommend, the health issues, I don't know, friend. I, I might take my 41-year-old wisdom and my 25-year-old body. I'm just oh, well, I mean, right. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. I'm just saying. But you all, if you are down for these types of conversations, then I know that you would absolutely enjoy our live taping. We will be in D.C. on March 21st and 22nd. 21st for a live taping at Eaton and the 22nd for a workshop on quitting and reimagining your life. We cannot wait to see you there. Ticket info will be in the description box. But until next time, good people, uh, drink some bone broth and, and take a laxative. <laughs> But actually, don't take a laxative if you don't need to. Because Girl, you're okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Um, sound off in the comments about the theories that you think are happening and how we can support Princess Kate. Because I don't want it just to be like gossiping about someone's sure. body. But I think there's something interesting going on. And it's maybe more nefarious than we think. Thanks for listening to Justice. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to learn more about our podcast, be sure to check us out on our website at justicepodcast.com. You can also reach out to us there if you want to be featured on the show or if you have a business or a product that you think would be a good fit for our audience. Thanks again for listening.